Hi, and welcome to The Writing Engineer. Today's video is sort of a companion video to the Blood and Guts one that I did a few weeks ago. If you haven't watched it, you should really check it out. It's pretty good. In that video, I discussed some of the odd things that I had to research for Amara's Law, my first book. Such as what happens to the human body when it's decapitated, or disemboweled, or in any other way injured so that the insides become out. Today, I'm talking about the things that made it necessary for me to do that. Namely, weapons. Now, this video is not in any way to be taken as a video on how to use weapons, where to purchase them, where to find them, or in any way condone the using of weapons on another living creature. This is just what you'd have to do to research weapons for use in your novel. In Amara's Law, my main character, codenamed 13, has a very special ability. She can star store and release electricity at will. Now, this might not sound so awesome, but from our physics, we learn that a moving electrical charge generates a magnetic field. So she can generate magnetic fields at will in any shape that she wants. Now, you might not, want, you might not see it immediately how useful that might be. Well, in the world that I crafted for Amara's Law, all of the standard weapons that we use today, all the firearms, all the guns, all the, all of everything, has been replaced with what's called rail technology. A short little description of rail technology is that it fires a projectile using an electromagnetic field, not a chemical reaction, the way normal guns that we have work. So naturally, the projectiles that they shoot have to be conductive. And if they're conductive, then they can be affected by magnetic fields. Maybe you're seeing now how useful that magnetic field she can generate is. She can basically deflect all projectiles fired at her. Pretty cool, right? Kind of like Superman, maybe? This gave a problem to my antagonists. They needed to figure out a way to subdue my main character. And they settled on antique firearms. The projectiles for all firearms today are usually made of some form of lead or other soft metal, typically not affected by magnetic fields. But in order to write about guns and weapons like that, I had to learn about them. So I became something of a situational expert on firearms. I needed to learn about muzzle velocities. I needed to learn about grains. I needed to learn about caliber and how weapons worked and what rifling actually is. Then I applied that to how my characters would react to those to using those weapons for the first time. It was the little things that made the scenes where the antagonist used those weapons come alive. It was the little things like how the weapons felt, how heavy they were, what they smelled like. More on that later. I'll be doing an episode on creating a scene using your senses. I'm not going to go into that here. This is just one example of knowing your weapons. But if you write fantasy or anything with swords in it, holy schmoly, do you have a lot of work to do, especially if your weapons are not magical. If you have a knight in your story, when should he use his broadsword? How heavy is it? When would he or she ever use a saber or a longsword? Is that ever even appropriate for them to use? Not to mention, what is the difference between those swords, and when is it advisable not to use them? What will your knight use when he's not in armor? Is he going to have a dagger, or a rapier, or a poignard? Does your story take place in Asia? If so, does your main character use a katana, or a wakisashi, or a kotachi? See what I mean? I only know this stuff because I used to be an insane fantasy reader. Not to mention the fact that I love the anime, Roroni Kenshin. Knowing your weapons will not only help you write a better story, but it will please your readers as well. And that is a really good thing, because some people are extremely picky when it comes to weapons used in stories. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please click the like button below, and don't forget to subscribe on your way out. If you'd like to be notified immediately of when my newest video comes up, click the notification bell. I try and get videos out once a week, usually early in the week on Monday or Tuesday, but sometimes I fall on my face. 
If you want to contact me or check out the status of any of my numerous projects, all my links are listed below. That's all for now. Have a good evening.